ES2015 introduces two new string methods that reduce the amount of code you need to write compared to working in ES5. The first is string.repeat. It's a handy little method that lets you, well, repeat a string any number of times. We could do this in ES5 too, but it was super hacky. The best approach was to create a blank array with n empty values and then create a string out of it using array.join, like this. Save this. Refresh, and there we go. What we're doing here is creating an array with three empty values, and then using dot .join, which creates an empty string. Except dot .join also allows us to specify text to put in between those values. So we put the text we want to repeat into the space where we'd normally put, for example, a comma. This is why we have to create a three-value array to get two repeats. Because we're basically creating a string that says blank let's repeat this blank let's repeat this blank, where blank doesn't exist. Super hacky, right? To quote those old infomercials, there's got to be a better way. There is, now. Here's how string.repeat works. Save that, check out our output. Much better. And straightforward, right? Tell it how many times to repeat your string, and that's what it does. No more messing around with arrays. You can also pass it variables and or do math like this. Save, refresh, as expected. String.repeat is probably not something you're going to use a ton, barring specialized applications, but it's a good tool to know about nonetheless. Probably more useful, however, is a new suite of string searching methods. So let's talk about those, too. We'll start by establishing a string to work with. First, let's take a look at the old ES5 way of searching for stuff. We'll see if our string starts with certain text, ends with certain text, and contains certain text in that order. Here's the code. This should log true for us three times. Or it would if I didn't have this space here. That's better. That's confusing to read, and on the second line it requires you to know the exact length of the text you're searching for, or create a second variable from that text and then use dot length. Either way, it's annoying. Here's how we handle the same stuff in ES2015. This should give us three more trues and a false. And it did. That's not only shorter, it's also easier to read. Wins all around. But wait, there's more! Sorry, still in infomercial mode, I guess. You can also use modifiers like this. Let's explain why we're going to get these returns. We're going to get the first true because we're starting two characters in. So, we start with hope. We're going to get the second true because we're only evaluating the first six characters. So this time it ends with hope. We're going to get false here because we're starting way past where hope is. Let's check and make sure. Two more trues and another false. Yep, true, true, false. Note that the modifier for ends with behaves differently than the other two. Starts with and includes both use the modifier to start evaluating the string further into it. Ends with, meanwhile, uses its modifier to prematurely stop evaluating the string. That's it for the new string methods. Next week, we'll be talking about numbers. Catch you then.